Good evening, and welcome to our service of Holy Eucharist on this fourth Sunday of Lent. Our bulletin can be found on our homepage on our website, so you can open that from there. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most, Most merciful God, God we, we confess, confess that, that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now we'll hear our first reading. Our first reading is from the book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice. And I will show you what you shall do, and you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded, and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves, and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shema pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, 
Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read in unison Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul, and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful words of darkness but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of when he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva, and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, no, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. 
He said to them, He put mud on my eyes. Then I washed. Now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they again said to the blind man, What do you say about him? Was your eyes he opened? He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked him, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is now that he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age. Ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes? We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and you are trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not know, who do not see, may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Back in 2002, I was living in New York City. I was living with my roommate at the time, who was a buddy of mine from college. And when you live in New York City, brunch is an essential activity. It's almost a sacrament. That particular day, we had just finished brunch. Um, it's a serious serious business, and we had gone to one of our favorite spots, the Cowgirl Restaurant down in Greenwich Village. As we were leaving the restaurant, we hailed a cab. This was way before there was anything like Uber or Lyft. And while we were driving, my roommate got a phone call. I could tell something was up by the way uh, he answered the phone. Sorry about that. So he got this phone call on the phone, 
And he said, yes, uh, this is he. This let me know that the phone call was from someone he didn't know. Probably a telemarketer or someone maybe vaguely official. But I looked over and I noticed that my friend started to look a little pale. When he got off the phone, I turned to him and I said, everything okay? He explained that the call was from the New York City Health Department, that he was being officially notified. There was a good chance he had been exposed to something, uh, something quite serious, actually, something quite scary. And then my friend paused, and he asked me a question. It was a short question. But the memory now, almost 20 years later, is still quite vivid. He turned to face me in the back seat of the cab, and he simply said, Stephen, do you think God is punishing me? I would have thought he was joking, except for the sheer terror and panic I saw in his eyes. My roommate wasn't particularly religious or spiritual, as far as I knew. And so that question from him, well, it sort of caught me off guard. But I realized he was quite serious. I knew he thought of me as spiritually inclined, which was why he was asking me this particular question. So he asked me the question, and I kind of stumbled uh, in my reply, no, no, of course not. And then with a little more resolve, I said, I don't believe in that kind of God who would do such a thing. This response seemed to calm him a bit. Yeah, 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 that's what I thought. But I could still hear a lingering hesitation in his voice. Truth be told, I was shaken up too not only with the possibility that my friend might be sick, but that his image of God was so dark and so disturbing. That he believed God had planned somehow to infect him, to teach him some sort of moral lesson, or to punish him, even. When sickness and illness appear, as they always do, our perspective, theological or otherwise, often goes out the window. We want some sort of framework, a way to place this unexpected event into a larger container. And this habit of placing blame for random occurrences, blame on others or blame on God, well, it has a very long history. I mean, if you look at today's gospel, for example. Jesus is walking along a road, and when he happens to see a blind man from birth, which makes me think that maybe Jesus and his disciples knew him, or maybe they knew of this blind man at least. I mean, how else would they have known that he was blind from birth and not some kind of accident? But anyways, maybe the blind man had been an object of community gossip. Maybe he had been an object of pity or even of disgust. An uncomfortable reminder to the sighted of what it is to be in need, to be vulnerable, to be compromised. Which is why the disciples' question makes a sort of perverse sense. Teacher, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? In other words, what did he do or his parents do that God would allow this? Teacher, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Who sinned? Jesus then replies, neither this man or his parents sinned. Or as one translation I like says, you're asking the wrong question. You're looking for someone to blame. 
There is no such cause and effect here. Look instead for what God can do. When difficult things occur, what is our initial response? Was my roommate who had the health scare asking the right question? Are we asking the right question? By which I mean the question Jesus is asking. And that question, I think, is this. When faced with a person or a community in need, do we first look for what God can do? Not, why is this person sick? Not, what did they do wrong? And not, not even as strange as it sounds, what can I do to be of help? That's important, but that maybe should not be our first question. Maybe the first question we need to ask, what is God already doing? That seems to me to be the Christian question, and that's a very church question. You see, the disciples assumed God had punished the blind man. Jesus assumed God was trying to heal him by whatever means. When faced with a person or a community in need, do we first look for what God can do? Or as Jesus says it again from today's gospel, we must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. This is a very strange time, but not only because of COVID-19. It's a strange time because Lent is a strange time. Lent is about slowing down. Lent is about learning to ask the right questions. Lent is about seeing pain and injustice and suffering and learning to identify how God is addressing this and then maybe joining with her, not looking for blame, and maybe not even looking for meaning in it. Simply looking for ways God is acting and how God is inviting us to help. I feel scared this Lent in a way that is new to me. And I imagine many of you do too. Things are changing rapidly. It's an incredibly unpredictable time which makes it even more crucial that we ask the right question together. The question Jesus taught his disciples to ask. And the question I think he asks of this, of us, this very day. When faced with a person or community in need, do we first look for what God can do? We will need to help each other see glimpses God's activities. The way that the Holy Spirit is providing gifts to us and to the world. Patience to the impatient. Calm to the anxious. Strength to the fearful. Energy to the tired. And hope in a time when hope seems maybe in short supply. I, for one, am grateful that we can all look to God first and that we can do this together. Together. Teacher, who sinned? This man or his parents? That he was born blind. And Jesus replied, you are asking the wrong question. You're looking for someone to blame. There is no such cause and effect here. Look instead for what God can do. Amen. And now I invite you to join me we profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We, we believe, believe in one God, God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and a Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. As a sign of our obedience, let us bend the knee of our hearts and make an offering of prayer and thanksgiving to God as we respond, Lord, have mercy. For those preparing for baptism, and other rites of initiation, and those who will renew their baptismal vows at the great Easter vigil, that they may find in the church a place of spiritual integrity, renewal, and hope, forgiveness, and restoration. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. That Christians throughout the world who are prosecuted for being followers of Christ may be protected by the strong armor of faith and sustained by the fervent prayers of all the baptized. Let us pray. Lord, Lord have mercy. That the work of God may be made visible through our weaknesses and shortcomings, bearing witness to others of the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome the heartache and despair that visits every human heart. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. That we, as a Eucharistic people, become what we receive and open to the mercy of the Lamb who shares our burdens, removes our sins, and restores us to the company of the faithful. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. That those who have died may rest in peace, and we who hear of disease, war, and famine remain restless enough to make a difference until God's kingdom comes. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Knowing that Jesus opens the eyes of the blind, gives voice to the voiceless, and frees those who are imprisoned by fear, let us with confidence continue our prayers and special intentions in silence. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Lord God, we ask that you keep all of those folks who are providing care to those infected with COVID-19, all those that are experiencing anxiety, we ask that you uphold them and fill them with your grace and strength, that they may know the healing power of your love. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Discerner of hearts, you look beneath our outward appearance and see your image in each of us. Banish in us the blindness that prevents us from recognizing truth, so that we may see the world through your eyes and with the compassion of Jesus Christ who redeems us. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. 
Let us offer one another a spiritual sign of God's peace. Well, once again, thank you for joining us today for our Eucharist. Um, I want to offer a special thanks right now to our pastoral care team for their work in getting together our care kits for those that may be quarantined with the virus. If you do know that uh, that is the case, please call the on-call phone and we will get a kit to you and leave it on your front steps. Also, I'd like to, to say thank you to the facilities team for all of their extra work in getting the campus sanitized and safe uh, for all of you for that time when we come back to be together. Until further notice, all public worship and in-person meetings are canceled, but virtual meetings can still take place, and so I encourage our small groups and our various commissions to meet in that way. And if you need any assistance in setting up a virtual meeting, please contact the parish office or email Tracy Stone, and she can help you set that up. And for pastoral emergencies, please call the clergy on-call phone at 443-538-2806. Shortly, we are going to celebrate the Eucharist, and I want to invite you to be part of this spiritual communion in a new way. Just as Christ died for us, suffered for us, rose from the dead, he gave us this meal as a sign of that love for us. And so we are connected through the Eucharist to all those Christians that have gone before us, to one another, and to those that are yet to come. And so I invite you into this spiritual union. Come with gratitude and joy to the table of the Lord. Bring the works of your hands and the gifts of your lives as an offering of praise. And today we will not take up an offering in the literal sense, but I encourage you to make your pledge online or mail in your envelopes. Reverend Stephen kind of went crazy. <laughs> also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we say, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. 
living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, gave sight to the blind, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. The supper was ending. Jesus took the cup of wine. Again he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, in remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that may be the body and blood of Christ and breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. And in the fullness of time, bring us with St. John and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let, let us keep, keep the feast. The body of Christ for the body of Christ. Amen. Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. We are so delighted that you were able to tune in and be part of this spiritual communion. And we'll see you later on this evening at Compline. God bless you all. Good night.